Billionaire casino magnate Steve Wynn shies away from no topic, from the 2016 presidential race to the growing threat of terrorism in Las Vegas. Today, Wynn leaves no stone unturned in this unprecedented interview with KTNV. Ralston Reports starts right now. Welcome to Ralston Reports. I'm John Ralston. We invite you to join us every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. right here on KTNV. We'll break down the issues that matter most to you and bring you exclusive interview content with Nevada newsmakers that you won't see anywhere else. With a month to go until Election Day, Ralston Reports also is your most trusted source for all things 2016. Let's get right down to business. Tonight, we're giving you a closer look at my recent 90-minute exclusive with Rin Majort CEO Steve Wynn. Wynn and I touched on a myriad of topics during the unprecedented sit-down, including the future of gaming, Wynn's business dealings in Macau, much more. He also had a great deal to say about the 2016 presidential election and growing tensions surrounding race relations in the U.S. Take a look. You're going to support Donald Trump, are you not, at some point? Probably, but I, I haven't done it yet. You haven't contributed any money in the presidential race to any of the PACs or anything like that yet? No. So, okay, all my searching for the internet was not in vain. I thought I, thought I couldn't find any. There really isn't any. I mean, I mean you, know, you know Trump pretty well. You know the criticisms of Trump. He's not stable enough. He doesn't know policy enough. You know the guy really well. Is he ready to be president? Donald <clears throat> is a intelligent guy. There, there, there seems to be a, a, a thing about him getting in front of a crowd in which he gets uh, aggressive and, and sometimes his speech is, uh, you know, he shoots from the hip. Privately, he's thoughtful and that's the reason he's been successful. So you're saying he's much different in private. He's saying you're saying he's a performer at those rallies. I think he's a performer at the rallies, and I think he hasn't quite, you know, got his act down. Uh, but in a in a personal conversation about any substantive issue, Donald Trump is focused and uh, intelligent. This business of being a politician and getting in the, the razzmatazz of public debates and public speeches, I think it's a heady business. And, you know, he's been a real estate guy. It's all about his one-on-one -on -one contacts with people and his vision of understanding the future. And on that point, he's a much stronger guy than he appears to be when in these, in the, during the primary season especially, he was rambunctious. Well, why, why haven't you supported him then? Because you know this other side of him. You think that this criticism of him is unfair then, probably. I don't think of this whole business of the election in terms of personalities. I'm thinking in terms of the election of what is, what is doing damage to my employees. Look, every benefit that I've received in, in life, and the only reason you asked me to come over here is because of the success my businesses have had, and that is due to the employees, the 12,000 or 13,000 people that work for me in Las Vegas, and the 30-odd thousand that work for me at the Mirage Resorts. I am very much aware of the condition of my employees. Because I know that when they're, when they're in a great frame of mind, when they feel safe, secure, and happy, then they pass all that joyfulness and that positive energy on to my guests. And that's the reason the place has a franchise. Well, so I'm HR sensitive. And I know what's going on with my employees, and I know what's going on in America. And unless the living standard of Americans is improved, this kind of frustration and anxiety that's erupting in many ways in this country is going to get worse. But I don't understand. That still doesn't explain why you haven't supported Trump yet. You, you obviously like him better. I'm looking for a discussion in the public forum that's focused on the issue of the day that we can't owe 21 or 22 or 23 trillion, which is where we're headed. We can't really increase the money supply by 50 billion a month and have people stay calm. They're going to get steamed and they're going to b in a hundred different ways. And, and if it's the lower end of the economic spectrum, which unfortunately is the African American community, they're going to be more anxious and, and, and more disruptive than they were before in their frustration. 
and people are going to begin to look for excuses like uh, we got to be against uh, the, the, the immigration is out of control. Well, the fact of the fact that immigration has been out of control for a while is no surprise to anybody. But the reaction to immigration is again part of the problem of the economic dislocation of people's lives. But Trump's tapped into that, that's for sure, and he did during the problem. But don't you think he's done it in language, Mr. Wynn, that, is, that, is, that, that should disturb some people? Look, if things are awry, if things are screwed up, and some comes along that says so, I don't think it's really very important on how good his rhetoric is. If he's a rough talking businessman, so what? The question is, what's he going to do about it? What's he really saying? The, the language he uses, you know, I, some of my friends tend to use more profanity than others. Uh, some of my friends are more bombastic than others. But what, what do they stand for substantively? Wynn went on to express support for Republican Congressman Joe Hack in his bid to replace retiring Democratic senior Senator Harry Reid. He also told me he wants to see more Republicans elected to Congress in November because he believes strong GOP leadership would work to repeal the Affordable Care Act that Senator Reid championed. Take a look. I think Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan together will address the problem. I don't think, I know they will. If they have a Republican in the White House, they will send legislation over there to come up with an alternative to the Affordable Care Act that will incentivize and reduce health care costs. You know, I said to Harry, I said to Harry Reid, Harry, we're buddies. You know, he stays in the hotel sometimes with Londra when he's out of session, he stays in the hotel. And I don't bother him, you know, he's a guest and my friend. Harry. What happened to long distance charges when, when Vonage goes against Verizon and AT&T? Long distance charges go down. What happens when Geico goes against Allstate and Progressive to car insurance and motorcycle insurance goes down? Why in 2,700 pages of that damn bill did you not address interstate advertising or healthcare savings accounts? I mean, the fundamental mistakes are so outrageously simple that what they What does your made. friend Harry Reid say to you when you, I mean, if he's your friend, you're trying to give, get his seat to a Republican. He sits in my, when we're together, we're sitting together. Yeah. He says, explain it to me. So I try to explain it to him. And he listens, and then he does whatever he does. Look. I spoke to Charlie Rangel when the Affordable Care Act came out. He's a friend of mine and a very powerful Democrat. Congressman from New York, in case anybody does, doesn't know, go ahead. And I'll do an invitation to Charlie Rangel. Steve, what Nancy Pelosi says that we have to pass the Affordable Care Act in order to find out what's in it, it is as ridiculous as it sounds. <laughs> that, was, that was actually pretty good. There were eight or nine committees, plus the White House, staffers in a room. Each one said, we're not gonna go for this unless you put that in. We're not gonna put, the other one says, we're not gonna go for it unless you put that in. There was no comprehensive brain in the Affordable Care Act. This is Harry Reid and Barack Obama's signature achievement you're talking about. In fact, Harry Reid, you signature know, you, you mentioned it. You know, Harry Reid got that through. Without Harry Reid, that thing would not have been passed. Obama couldn't do it. Reed got those votes. He essentially bribed a couple of senators with stuff. You know how you know, you you read all about it. The Cornhusker kickback, the Louisiana Purchase. You know all about. It. Harry Reid did this. Yes, I know. You're disappointed in him. I called him up. I said, you know, in bowling, the, the toughest shot to make is the seven ten split. You know the corner pins. I said, legislatively, you've achieved the seven ten split. You just screwed the unions and management all at the same time. Did you say that to him? I did. And what did he say back to you? Stop grousing, stop complaining about government. So tell me, tell me about uh, your support for Joe Heck. How, how big are you going? I know you've given some money to the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Is that where your focus really is? I gave is? money personally. I've, held, I, I've had a fundraiser for him in New York, had a fundraiser for him in California. Uh, I sponsored what you know, I did it at my home, but they, they paid for it. Uh, I've, uh, I've tried my best to convince other people uh, on what an outstanding candidate he is and how good he would be for Nevada. Have you given a lot of money to the, to the National Republican Senatorial Committee? Are you going to continue to do that? Why not? 
I mean, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see uh, Rob Portman stay in office in uh, Ohio. I'd like to see Ron Johnson get reelected. I'd certainly like to see Kelly Ayotte get elected and Pat Toomey. It's this race here, you know. This race here could determine control. You, I'm sure you understand that. Harry Reid's seat is the only Democratic seat the Republicans have a chance to take. And so if they don't, take the, if they don't keep the seat, the Democrats, they probably can't take control. Real quickly, are, are you, are you going to get involved in the congressional races here? Are you interested in Tarkanian and Rosen or Reuben Keewin and Crescent Hardy? I like Crescent Hardy. You do? Oh, I think Crescent Hardy is a dandy guy. You know, he's, he represents the, the real old-time Nevada, you know, what is he, fifth-generation mesquite rancher? Yeah. He's a road contractor. Just a square guy, an American who thinks this is the greatest country in the world. Does, tells the truth, sort of square shooting. So you're backing him? Oh, yeah. Okay. I love Chris. What about Tarkanian and Rosen? In that I don't know Mrs. Rosen. I know Danny Tar Tarkanian, and I'd like, to, I'd like to see him win. Coming up, more from my exclusive interview with Steve Wynn. Find out where he stands on that controversial recreational pot initiative and what he has to say about his strip competitor and new best friend, Sheldon Adelson. That's next. Welcome back to Ralston Reports. We bring you more of my exclusive interview with Steve Wynn. Take a look what Wynn had to say about his close friend Sheldon Adelson and the reasoning behind his endeavor to bring professional sports to Las Vegas. Why do you think he's doing it? Have you talked to him about it? Yeah, I talked to him about it. He said, what the hell, Steve? Town's been good to me. Let's do it. In long term, we'll benefit from it. We've got 7,000 rooms. It'll strengthen my business. He said, it benefits everybody else more than it does you and I because, you know, we've got less rooms than the big companies. He says, but it's a good thing. What the hell? That's the way he is. <clears throat> Adelson is an unusual character, to say the least. Sheldon is a man of uh, cold-blooded, swashbuckling, entrepreneurial fearlessness. He's a very, very good businessman and a fearless kind of guy in business. It's all or nothing with this guy. So he's had success in life, in gaming, in, the, in Asia in particular, and he's very philanthropic. His school here is a big deal, the Adelson School. The, he's, got, he's a tremendous supporter of Israel, as you know, but he supports a lot of other stuff. But he's a man of very strong opinions, very strong opinions. And he's not a guy who has a lot of self-doubt. So when Sheldon has a strong opinion, he stands on it and speaks up and doesn't give a damn what other people think. And occasionally, that makes him appear to be belligerent. And I suppose he can be. But when he's on the right side of an issue, he's a force to be reckoned with. And he's on the right side of this professional sports in Nevada issue. And I hope everybody else has the common sense to see it. This is one of the great things that's come down the pike to us. I went on to ask Wynn about the future of Las Vegas, including that controversial ballot initiative to legalize recreational marijuana in Nevada. Take a look. I mean, it's stuff that you, you and I couldn't have imagined 40 or 50 years ago. And I guess what I'm asking you is that, I mean, this, it seems to me that trying to stop internet gambling, web gambling, the kinds of things you're talking about, daily fantasy sports, you're putting your finger in a dike. You cannot stop this. It's just a matter of when it happens. I mean, even your, your friend Sheldon Adelson, I think, is swimming upstream on thinking that he can Sheldon. stop it. Sheldon Adelson, among all of his other, con, you know, well, strongly held beliefs, his convictions, Two things. He thinks drugs, marijuana are dangerous for children, and that if you allow internet gambling, kids will somehow get a hold of their parents' credit card or something, and irresponsible gaming will take place that's not regulated. You agree with him, don't you? You have to, because it makes sense. He's, he, but I want to tell you, he is staunch on these points, and I don't believe that anything is going to shake him on it. And there's an awful lot of people that feel the same way. We're getting on the drug issue. I also believe that the amount of time law enforcement has spent on chasing people smoking joints is ridiculous. Are you for the legalization of pot then? I'm trying to figure out what an intelligent position is. I was trying to find out what's going on in Colorado. I mean, 
Yeah. The idea was we're going to start. What was one of the ideas? Is not waste law enforcement's time on chasing people smoking a joint. That's an that's, that's, and that's cool. and uh, and and then which will undermine the strength of the illegal drug dealers. So has Colorado done all that? It, it, has there been an uptick in what some of the people who are against it think are the awful results? Sheldon thinks if you do this, kids are going to get into drugs. You know, Miriam, his wife, runs drug rehab. That's her career, her I, life. I, I thought she was the driving force in the family against uh, You think Sheldon is on board too? But it's because of her, right? They are connected at the hip on yeah. this issue. Okay. And Miriam Adelson is articulate on this point and can back it up with statistics. So this isn't an, an, an off-the-cuff kind of thing for them. But you're not on board yet? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 I'm conflicted this way. I don't want children to be into drugs. And if marijuana is the, uh, the gateway drug, then, it, then we ought to keep it depressed and not legalize it. But if all of our cops are arresting, putting kids in jail for smoking a joint, that seems to be you know, a distraction that's not relevant or proportional. What do the polls show? That Will it pass in Nevada? Our most recent polls showed it with a, a slight majority, 53%. But, 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 but I think Sheldon Adelson is going to spend some money against this. I, I may be wrong, but I would guess he feels strongly enough about it that well, he'll try to beat it. He'll put money where his mouth is every yeah, time. That's what I think. But, you know, he's got one vote when it comes down to it. That, that, and and miri has got one vote. But if you spend money, you can, you, can, you can sway it. Have the people of Nevada who vote address this issue the way we are in this conversation? Have they measured the pros and the cons? Is there, or is this strictly going to be a propaganda war on who spends more money on yeah, TV? Yeah, it, it may end up being, so just and, I hope not. I hope, it's, I hope it's a more considered decision. You're more optimistic than I am, but l l let me ask you again. Do you think that this, no matter how Sheldon Adelson feels about it and, he, and, and, and what you consider common sense about children getting involved in, 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 in internet gaming, et cetera, Five, ten years from now, you're going to be able to walk around, don't you think, with your with your smartphone and be able to gamble? Almost everybody will be able to do that. Am I wrong? I think that the prediction you just made is hard to argue with, based upon the liberalization of gaming in every other respect in America, and the general trend towards the digital world. Your comment, your prediction is supported by history, by recent history. So it would be hard to say it won't happen. I think you're probably right. Coming up, GOP presidential nominee Donald Trump is in hot water with Nevadans after a lesson in elocution backfires on him. We'll show you the gaps, still making headlines across the country. Next. Welcome back. Just in case you missed it, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump completely botched the pronunciation of Nevada. That came here while he was addressing a crowd of supporters in Reno earlier this week. And people in the Silver State are not happy about it. Take a look. Heroin overdoses are surging and meth overdoses in Nevada. Nevada. Nobody says it the other way. It has to be Nevada, right? And if you don't say it correctly, and it didn't happen to me, but it happened to a friend of mine, he was killed. What's funny about all that is that the Trump campaign called me afterwards. They were so worried about him botching the pronunciation that they said it was a joke. But of course, that's not a joke because he was talking about heroin overdoses. Who would make a joke while talking about heroin overdoses? Not even Donald Trump. Later on, he decided he didn't know what Yucca Mountain was. So Donald Trump's week in Nevada, not so good. But Trump isn't the only casino boss who has trouble pronouncing Nevada. Check out my exchange with Steve Wynn about how to say the name of the state. You and I both come from back east and I've been here for more than 30 years now, but I know how to pronounce the name of the state. It's Nevada. How come you haven't learned how to pronounce the name of this state, Mr. Wynn? Did I say Nevada or Nevada? You say Nevada all the time. I was born in New England. I'm from Connecticut. My family's all from Boston, and that, that New England, <laughs> all, you know. But I'm, I'm trying to remember to say Nevada, John Honest. Uh, it's been 48 years. I'm a little slow. <laughs> I'm a little slow, but it's home to me. He actually does say it both ways, but he does say Nevada 
way too much, and uh, I think he's properly chastened uh, right now. So that's all the time we have for today, but you know what's coming up this next week? It's the special session to talk about the stadium up in Carson City. I'm going to be up there reporting. Will Sheldon Adelson get public money for that stadium? $750 million. He wants in room tax money. Will the legislature come along? They need 28 votes in the Assembly and 14 in the State Senate. They already have the governor. And there's already blowback starting to the public money component, especially with all the other state needs. And because education money, money was on the agenda, the governor said it was essential. Then he abruptly took it off within 24 hours. So now they're going into that session being asked to invest the biggest amount of public money ever for a stadium, and the legislature is being asked to approve it. The northern Nevada folks aren't too happy about it. Will the southern Nevada folks get on, on board? Steve Wynn will be up there testifying, as will Jim Murren. Thanks for watching Ralston Reports, everybody. Have a great night. <music>